Hello and welcome to the library. My name is Sarah and today we're getting messy in the kitchen. This is one of my favourite things to do. Today we're actually going to be making some Play-Doh. This is a fantastic recipe. It's super easy and it's a recipe we use here at the library for our playtime sessions and for our first Five Forever programs out and about. So for this recipe, you're going to need some ingredients, of course. So we're going to need some plain flour, some salt. I'm using table salt today. We also need some oil, some water, some cream of tartare, and some food colouring. You'll also need some tools. So we need, of course, a wooden spoon. We'll need a large bowl for our dry ingredients, and we'll need a smaller bowl for our wet ingredients. We're going to mix up our wet ingredients and our dry ingredients and then add our wet ingredients to our dry ingredients. This makes sure that we don't have too many lumps at the end. We're also going to need a tablespoon. If you don't have a tablespoon measure, like I have, you can use a normal tablespoon from the kitchen drawer. We also need a half cup measure and a full cup measure. Okay, so let's get started with our wet ingredients first. Now, in the recipe, this asks for half a cup of salt. Now, salt is a dry ingredient, but it's very grainy. So what I like to do is dissolve it into the water first, and that makes for a smoother dough. So we're going to grab our half cup measure, and we're going to measure out half a cup of salt. And how we do this is we grab our cup, and we scoop into the salt, we make sure the cup is nice and full all the way up to the top, and we pour that into our small bowl, like so. Then we're going to grab our water, and we need one cup of water to half a cup of salt. Now, what I've done is I've warmed up my water a little bit, because what we're going to do now is a chemical reaction. We're going to dissolve a crystal into some water. And when we do a chemical reaction, it makes it a lot faster when you add a catalyst, in this case, heat. So heat will make that a little bit faster for us. So we're going to pour one cup of warm water into our salt. Now we do need to be careful when we put heat in the kitchen. So when we measure out a cup of warm water, I'm just using the hot water from the tap, I'm going to put the hot water into a jug first before I put it into my measuring cup. If you try and pour the hot water from the tap, it runs a little bit too fast and it can splash up into your face. So make sure you pour it into a jug first. All right, so we've poured that into our salt and we're going to grab our spoon and give that a gentle stir until all of the salt has dissolved, well, most of the salt. You can see it's nice and cloudy. Yeah, give a stir. There we go. Now, it's a good idea when you're cooking in the kitchen to have some paper towel handy just to wipe up any accidental spills. There we go. We can also use it to dry our cups because we're going to need that for our flour. If we put a wet cup into the flour, it's going to stick. So we'll give that a quick dry. All right, so into my salt and water mix, I'm going to add a tablespoon of oil. Now you can use any oil for this. This one's just a vegetable oil, um, but you can use coconut oil if you want a nice smoother consistency. Also, if you're making Play-Doh for use of older children, so children who aren't going to put it into their mouth, you can use um, a cheap a hair conditioner instead of um, oil. Uh, that'll make it a nice smelling um, Play-Doh. Or you can use some hand moisturiser as well. There we go. So we'll pour a one tablespoon of oil. I'll give that a wipe. And my favourite bit, the food colouring. So I think we're going to make this one yellow. Now, food colouring is very strong, so we don't want to use too much of it. And if you're using blue, be very careful, because blue does stain your fingers. I used blue a little bit earlier, and it's all over my fingers. So I'm just going to do about half a cupful 
of the yellow. There we go. Being careful not to get it on my fingers. Now when it first goes in, yellow sort of looks orange. But the more you mix it, the more yellow it becomes. There we go. All right, so we're going to set that aside while we mix up our dry ingredients. So grab our bigger bowl. So in here, we're going to need one cup of plain flour. So I'll grab my cup measure again, making sure it's nice and dry. And we'll pop that into the flour. Now, if you grab your clean finger and run it across the top of your cup, that makes sure you have one full cup of flour. There we go. We'll pop that into our bowl. our flour and we're going to need two tablespoons of cream of tartar. Now cream of tartar is used in cooking. It's actually a part of uh, baking powder. So baking soda and cream of tartar mixed together makes baking, so pa baking pa powder. <laughs> it's very hard to say. And that's what makes your cooking rise. In Play-Doh, cream of tartar makes a nice smooth consistency and helps it last a little bit longer. So we'll pop that lid back on. Okay, so now, give that a bit of a mix, we're going to add our liquid to our flour. And we're just going to stir gently as we pour that in. There we go. We'll scrape in the salt that didn't get mixed in. Yeah, yeah. I'm making a bit of a mess. I always make a mess in the kitchen. There we go. That's why I've always got paper towel. All right, so we're going to stir that together. It's not going to look very much like Play-Doh, and actually this mix is a very wet mix. And that's why we need to cook it in the microwave to get it nice and stiff. So we're going to stir that together, trying to make sure there's not too many lumps. So we stir it nice and gently to get all the flour incorporated. And then you can give it a nice whipping. If you've got a whisk, it's a good idea to use a whisk for this part. Oh, can you hear that sound? <laughs> All right, so we stir that through, you can see there, it's nice and mixed and it's a very wet mixture. Now if you don't have a microwave, you can actually do this on the stove, just put it into a saucepan and cook it on a low heat, stirring continuously as you go. If you've got a microwave, it goes a little bit faster, so we're going to scrape down the sides and scrape off our spoon. Oh, it already feels very good. Nice and smooth. All right. We're going to pop that into the microwave for two minutes on high. If your micro all microwaves work a little bit different, so your microwave need, might need a little bit longer or a little bit less. All right, so we're going to pop that into the microwave. In two minutes, there we go. Okay, so while we're waiting for that to cook, it's time to tidy up. So we're going to wipe down our bench and we're going to put our cups into nice warm soapy water to wash. And hmm, what else can we do while we're waiting? Or well, maybe we can talk about all the different books that you can borrow from the library. If you're having fun being messy in the kitchen, you can borrow all sorts of recipe books from the library, as you can see around me. We can learn how to cook things from cakes to biscuits to main meals to lunches and all sorts of different things. We also have fantastic books on slime making. So if you don't want to make something to eat and want to make something to play with, we have lots of slime books here at the library and other scientific experiments that you can do at home with things around the house. So how much time have we got? We've got one more minute. 
Hmm. You know what else you can make with things in the kitchen? You can make oobleck. We're going to make some oobleck after we've finished making our Play-Doh. And what oobleck is, is a non-Newtonian liquid. So that works differently than how Newton says that liquids should react. In this case, oobleck is a liquid that can pour, but if you add force to it, it becomes a solid. And it's made with corn flour and water. Very easy to do. Oh, almost done. We're going to wash up our bowl real quick. There we are, rinse that in the water. Get that ready to make our oobleck. Yep, almost done. Oh, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two. One. All right, we'll pop that out. Be very careful because it's very hot out of the microwave. You might want to get it grown up to help you with this. All right, let's give that a stir. And you can see it was a liquid and now it's almost Play-Doh. So I'm going to give that, I think this one needs another 30 seconds in the microwave. If your Play-Doh is a little bit more liquid than this, it might need, an, need another minute. As I said, all microwaves are different. All right, so pop that back in the microwave for 30 seconds. While we're waiting for that, we're going to get our plastic wrap ready. So lay some plastic wrap out on your table. And we're going to wrap up our Play-Doh as soon as it comes out of the microwave. This makes sure that all the steam stays inside the dough and it doesn't dry out too quickly. So eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. All right, here we go. All right, we'll give that another mix. And what you want it to do is to come away from the sides of the bowl and form a smooth ball in the middle. So make sure that's grabbed all the different Play-Doh. Oh, nice and soft. Okay, so we're going to turn that out onto our plastic wrap. And we're going to wrap that up nice and tight. Remember, your Play-Doh at this stage is very warm, so you don't want to handle it too much. So we're just going to wrap it up quickly, and we're going to pop that into the fridge for about 10 minutes for it to cool down enough for us to handle. Okay. So while we're waiting for that to cool down, let's make some oobleck. So for this, we're going to need our bowl and we're going to need some corn flour and some water. And you want to mix this at a ratio of two to one. So you want, if you do two cups of flour, that's one cup of water. Or if you do one cup of flour, that is half a cup of water. So corn flour, here we go. We'll do, let's see, half cup. So one half cup of corn flour and two half cups of corn flour. And then a half cup of water. And some food coloring. Mm, what color this time? I think green. There we go. So we'll grab our spoon, which we'll clean the Play-Doh off of, and give that a stir. Now, it's a bit tricky to stir oobleck because, oh, <laughs> oops the daisy, as I said, um, oobleck is a non-Newtonian liquid. 
So when you add pressure to it, like when you stir, it becomes a solid. So you have to stir very gently to try and get all the flour incorporated. If you try to stir too hard, it becomes very difficult. All right. There we go. Ooh, my oobleck is a little bit sloppy. I'm going to add some more flour. All flowers absorb f water differently. So sometimes you need a little bit more flour, sometimes you need a little bit more liquid. Oh, that's looking much better. There we go. Can you see here as I'm stirring it, it's becoming nice and thick when I stir, but as soon as I let go, it becomes a liquid again. Ugh. <laughs> There we go. So in the bowl, it's a liquid, but as soon as I put my fingers in and grab it, it becomes a solid. Look at that. So solid when I'm adding pressure, and as soon as I relax my fingers, ooh. <laughs> ooh, it's lots of fun to play with. The great thing about Oobleck is it's really easy to get off your fingers because all you need to do is twist, add some pressure and it just flakes right off. There we go. All right. So that's how you make Oobleck. It's a nice fun one to play with. Very messy. So when you're playing with Play-Doh or Oobleck, make sure that you're not anywhere with a carpet and you need to play with it on a hard surface like um, wooden floors or tiles or maybe outside because if it gets into the carpet, it's very difficult to get out. All right, look. <laughs> All right, I'm going to give my hands a rinse and then we'll check on our Play-Doh. So it hasn't been 10 minutes, but I have had it in the freezer. So let's have a look. Oh, it's still very warm, but maybe you can get a grown up to do this bit because my hands are very tough. So I'm going to unwrap this and I'm going to give it a bit of a knead. So we're going to push and fold. We want to knead it till it's nice and smooth. Oh, it's very warm. There we go. So that's our yellow Play-Doh. And I've also made some blue Play-Doh as well, a little bit earlier. So this lump of Play-Doh is made from one cup of flour. This lump of Play-Doh I made double the recipe. So this is how much you make if you do two cups of flour to make your Play-Doh. I'll give this one a bit of a knead as well. You can see it's nice and smooth and very soft. Your Play-Doh will last in the fridge for a week or two, depending on where you play it and how clean your hands are when you start playing with your Play-Doh. Remember, there is some salt and oil in the Play-Doh and this can get on your hands. So after playing with Play-Doh, it's a good idea to give your hands a bit of a wash um, just to get rid of that salt and oil. Uh, also, the oil will come out on any surface that you play with your Play-Doh on, so make sure that it's a surface that is easy to clean. All right, there we go. Now we can add some extra things to our Play-Doh to make it just that little bit more fun to play with. So as you can see, this is one cup of flour, this is two cups of flour, and you can see the difference between those. And it's just as easy to make a big batch as a small batch. All right, so what can we do with our Play-Doh? Well, I've got two primary colours here, and if I mix them together, I might be able to change the colour. So yellow and blue, let's push them together. What colour are we going to get? Let's see. Smush, smush, smush. 
Oh, I can see the colour changing already. Now, you can add equal measures of the yellow and the blue. What colour does that make? If you add more blue than yellow, what colour does that make? Or if you add a heap of yellow and a little bit of blue, what colour does that make? There we go, a nice emerald green Play-Doh. Now, if you make Play-Doh in all the primary colours, you can play with colour matching and seeing what colours you can create. You can also play with the texture of your Play-Doh. You can add some hard surfaces, um, hard substances like rice or uh, split peas to change the texture of your Play-Doh. You can also add some fun things from the craft cupboard. We've got some glitter. We also love to play, add glitter to our Play-Doh. So we just mould our Play-Doh out and put some in the middle and then fold that over and give it a good knead. Add some more. And this is how you add rice or split peas or any other thing that you'd like to add to your Play-Doh. You can add some beads, mm, seeds from the garden. Here we go. Just be careful that um, if you are adding things to your Play-Doh, that if little ones are playing with it, that they don't actually put that Play-Doh into their mouth. All right. Here we go, a nice glittery Play-Doh. That. <laughs> all right, well, that's all the time we have for making a mess in the kitchen today. Uh, if you'd like to join us for more craft activities, we are doing a wonderful art program on Friday on our Facebook page. You can also look on our Facebook page for story time sessions, playtime and baby time sessions as well. And hopefully we'll get back to business pretty soon. Um, otherwise, have fun for the rest of your holidays. Have fun making mess in the kitchen and we'll see you again soon. Bye.